Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. It's back after a little bit of a hiatus. Hey, a little bit of juggling around here because thank you, WWE. Thank you um, for all that scheduling stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm got us and TNA running around uh, figuring out what we need to do. But it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. And a uh, video producer here in the Pittsburgh area with, of course, the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. And damn it, it's still getting pressed. The Montreal Theory uh, did some work on that as well. With me from San Antonio, Texas, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. That works out of Austin, Texas. He's Eamon Payton. Back with me. Very excited to be back, Sorg. Uh, I, I miss talking about indie wrestling with you. Yes, it's, it's a nice little tradition we do every week. Yes, <laughs> yes, and and we're back at it, and that's awesome. We got a great somebody representing a whole nother promotion out of Cleveland with the IW tonight. We'll get to that in one moment. In the meantime, check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com, where you'll find the Indie Mayhem Show as well as stuff like the Midweek War. Just had some recent uh, awesome discussions with Krista Joseph, uh, co executive producer of Lucha Underground and Vampiro. Just popping up and saying hi and having an impromptu interview with the guys on Google Hangout. Uh, Raw wrap-ups, Wrestling Mayhem show, and just other uh, great stuff. Uh, ra- <laughs> if you want to see what the guys thought of the uh, final deletion. This is the stuff that's come up since we've had an Indie Mayhem show in like the three or four weeks since we've done this thing. Uh, but we're back and uh, we- we've not been sleeping on things. Uh, so go check it out and subscribe to all the shows at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This week, I'm very excited. Very excited to have a guest return to the Mayhem Network. Um, um, we had him on ages ago, ages ago. I think I found the tweet that, that, that our guest tonight, John Thorne of absolute intense wrestling up in Cleveland, Ohio has not been here since 2009. And you disclosed an interesting fact about that, right, John? Yeah, this was, that was actually my first ever podcast interview ever. And now I return and I have my own podcast. So it's, uh. (laughs) It's been, it's been a long, long time. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. And of course, I want to get into all that kind of stuff. But first, we like to kind of have, uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, people get to know you a little bit um, here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Um, Let's do it. Yeah, first I question. Been here in uh, almost a decade. <laughs> <laughs> first question, because obviously you've been you're deep in this. You're neck deep into this right now. But uh, oh yeah, what was your uh, uh, introduction to wrestling? What's your earliest memory of wrestling that really kind of got you hooked? I mean, I've been asked this question before, and I really can't pinpoint a specific thing. Um, you know, I know it, it's probably something to do with Hulk Hogan. Um, <laughs> and I remember my dad taking me to uh, house shows at the old uh, Richfield Coliseum in Richfield, Ohio. Um, but uh, a specific moment that stands out, I can't, I can't really pinpoint that. Uh, but I was definitely like a, a little Hulkamaniac and you know, during that, you know, the, the late eighties, I would say probably like 87 or 88 would probably be, you know, my earliest memories. Awesome. And of course, you you know, I know we probably talked about this a bit before, I don't know, you know, the eight years ago, whenever you were on, but how did you come from that to running a promotion like AIW? Uh, I honestly got involved in wrestling in the most like unconventional way possible. Uh, when I was 15 years old in 1999, um, I figured out a way to promote my own actual independent wrestling show. Uh, it, something like that could never in a million years happen in this day and age. But, uh, I was 15 and I was in my, uh, math class and this, this dude, Joe was like, Hey, my, my cousin's a, he's a pro wrestler. And I was like, no way, you know who? And it was just, I didn't really know anything about indie wrestling or anything like that. And, um, you know, he gave me this guy phone number, JT lightning. And I called him up and, you know, he had no idea. I was only 15 years old. And he's like, yeah, you can run my ring for 300 bucks and you got to put me on the show. And I was like, okay, sounds great. And, uh, I ended up, uh, running a venue, like a local church gym by, you know, in the, in the town I grew up in Brexville, Ohio. And, you know, the rest is kind of history. I promoted a show with uh, JT Lightning on the card, and then me and a bunch of my friends from high school. Uh, and that also featured, you know, that was Josh Prohibition and M Dog 20s, Matt Cross's first ever experience in a pro wrestling ring, a real ring from their days in the backyard. And then I just kind of stayed involved ever since. And uh, man, that was in 1999. So I've, I've been doing this for, for quite some time. But it was definitely, it took years and years and years of doing everything the wrong way to finally 
you know, see everything click together. That's awesome. And of course, I, I'll leave that to your podcast about some of the details on how that is, because it's been really eye opening from from looking at promoter side of, of how that history has been for you guys. But but talking about AIW in particular, um, um, I finally, 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 finally experienced my first AIW show last year with Absolution. Um, I had to since it was one of Pedro's last shows. And uh, and, and Eamon, actually, Eamon and I both narrowly saw a, an absolution uh, several years ago when Daniel Bryan joined you guys in that stint where he was fired from WWE. We actually went up for the Chikara show and unfortunately couldn't stick around for yours. Uh, but uh, but you, we talk about you guys about every other week here. You're getting a lot of attention. It's always been kind of on people's list for a while. Of course, friends of the show like Jimmy DeMarco, Shima Zion have been, uh, 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 Zima, of course, uh, today have been involved with you guys for years um can you tell us a little bit about that rise you're i mean you're on absolution 11 coming up here um um, this weekend actually uh can you talk about that ride a little bit like how's that been for you i mean you know it's it's, i'm not going to say it's been easy or or even necessarily fun at some times (laughs) but um it's just you know, I, I think it's just a matter of being consistent and a lot of trial and error. You know, when we first started AIW, I was 21 years old. So my priorities were completely different than what my priorities are now, you know, 11 years later. Um, you know, when we first started the AIW, we just were trying to have a good time and like put on our own young version of wrestling in concert clubs and, you know, just kind of trying to be controversial and do all this, you know, crazy stuff and just kind of go against the grain of what the local scene was in Cleveland. Um, and then as the years progressed and, you know, uh, more money came in, we were able to spend more money and it's, it was a very slow, slow process. You know, we get, a, we get a little bit, you know, of success and then we just kept reinvesting it. We're, we're one of the probably few promoters and few promotions that don't pay ourselves at all from the shows. We take, everything that comes in and we 100% reinvest it towards the future. And we've just been doing that, you know, ever since day one and it's taken a long, long time, but you know, we got to this point to where we just kind of got on a roll. And as you know, more money came in, we were able to spend more money and the shows got better and better and better and better. And as the shows got better, you know, we got more attention and more DVD sales and more video sales and, uh, especially with the evolution of things like social media, you know, when AIW started, there wasn't really social media. There was like Friendster, you know what I mean? So we've, we've come a long way in that aspect too. And really utilizing, you know, things like Facebook and Twitter and especially YouTube. Um, our, our YouTube is, has really, really helped, you know, help us grow. I think, you know, I, I checked it earlier today cause I'm like, OCD about what our numbers are on everything. And I think, you know, we just cracked 12 million views on YouTube and we're about wow. to hit 20,000 subscribers. So just things like that, it's just, it, it's been a long, long, long process, but um, I, I would say just staying consistent and, you know, like never canceling shows and things like that. And um, always just trying to give people their money's worth and uh, a real wor- word of mouth type of thing. Like we're, we're very, we very much believe in the do it yourself, you know, DIY kind of mindset to where, you know, it, people, people see that their money isn't going in my pocket. They see, they see us investing 100% in the show and people really get behind that and becomes kind of like a, you know, a, like a, you know, everyone is in this thing together sort of thing. And that, you know, that has really helped us. That mindset has really helped us grow quite a bit, especially probably in the last three years. Certainly. I I mean, I I remember early shows. um, I I didn't, you know, I I, I remember early shows. Probably the first thing I saw of AIW was you guys in a bar doing a live commentary and like uh, DeMarco and Shima like destroying the bar. Uh, <laughs> or whatever else craziness was, was going on around there. I think Drag to Hell was one of those first shows, which I think was what you were yeah, promoting I, when you were on last. Yeah, that's, and you know, that's the thing. That's just like the evolution, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, when we started. You know, there was a lot of people that were against the live commentary and we were doing it to just be just be different. That was all that that was all there was to it. You know, the other indie shows in the area were traditional wrestling. We wanted to have live commentary just to be different. We wanted to, you know, we wanted to just do everything we could to be different. And then, you know, as as we evolved and things kind of progressed, you know, we phased that out. We started hiring Smart Mark Video. 
we started focusing on, you know, the actual good quality video product. So, you know, like I said, it's just been a, a very, very slow evolution. Um, but I really wouldn't have it any other way because I honestly, like, you know, the, you can't pay for an education like this, being a promoter for, you know, this long and, you know, experiencing all these different problems and changes and, you know, just how everything is, you know, how things were 10 years ago is, is completely different now, you know, and just to be able to navigate through all that change and all that, you know, evolution of e- even society as a whole, uh, you know, I, w- I wouldn't change for, for anything because it, it's, you know, it's been so helpful to learn the hard way. Certainly. Um, well, from that, um, and also, you know, let's talk about a little bit about the podcast. Um, and I always get this wrong. The card will change, I believe, is the name of it, right? Uh, the card is going. The to card change. is going to change. I screwed this up yesterday when I was I was talking to somebody about your show. Um, it's, to me, it's just like, hey, AIW's podcast. Go listen to it. Go, you know, and I, I I don't get to to the name of it. Um, but I've been enjoying it a whole bunch. Uh, again, your your interesting stories. About honky tonk man in hotel rooms in Detroit, uh, <laughs> uh, problems with the Canadian government, and and just the the absolute hell uh, 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 from the initial Grado uh, 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 intended uh, three night stand you were going to do. Um, it, 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 it's really eye opening, and 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 I've heard like like some of these stories in in from you know working with some of the people I've worked with uh, down here or uh, up there with Prime Wrestling or anything like that. Um, but I think it's really cool. You're the only ones I. I'm aware of that are this revealing about the promoter side of the business in public. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's, there's really been nothing like it. You know, I'll be the first to tell you that I never in a million years thought I would be a podcaster or wanted to start a podcast, but all these things happen and it, you know, it would kind of bother us because no matter what would happen out of our control, that always falls on AIW or the promotion uh, people don't understand all the different problems that independent promoters have to deal with. And, you know, it was actually Mike Burns who owns SmartMark Video who was really on on me specifically to, you know, hey, you guys should start a podcast. You guys should talk about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, you know, there's like, uh, like I thought just like everybody else in the world, uh, another wrestling podcast. Like, I, I really don't want to do it. And, you know, as things just kind of, you know, progressed with problems that we have and things like that. Uh, I was like, all right, you know what? I'll give it a, I'll give it a try because there isn't really anything like this. You know, the majority of promoters that go on podcasts, they just go on and they just want to shill things and they just want to try to get your money. We just want to go on and tell our side of the story and, you know, maybe we'll be interested in it. I didn't think that we would get such great feedback and such great numbers uh, because, you know, I was just like, I can't, I can't imagine in a million years, people are going to be so interested in this stuff because I think maybe because I'm too, just too far in, in the bubble of being involved in the industry, this, this stuff is just, this is just normal to me. The things that, you know, the stories that we tell in this podcast, and I didn't realize how, you know, just how much of it is so interesting to, you know, people that aren't involved in the industry and people that actually are involved in the industry. I've had several promoters contact me and just like, thank me for kind of going on and explaining these sorts of things. So, um, honestly, I, I didn't want to be a podcaster, but now it's kind of like, I kind of feel like, you know, we are filling a void that wasn't, you know, wasn't there. Certainly. And, I, and I think, uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people love about AI Depth and especially is you guys, your guys' transparency with that kind of stuff. And, and like you mentioned, um, uh, you know, fans, like you said, sometimes stuff happens in wrestling and, and it's almost like if, if fans knew what was behind that, um, you know, they would get a better understanding of like what it takes to put on a wrestling show. Do you, I, I guess, would you say that's a relief to you to kind of tell people like, this is what, it takes to kind of actually put on a wrestling show. It's not as easy as most people may think. Right. Well, yeah. And like you said, the transparency, um, you know, we've, we've actually been kind of, people have like been rubbed wrong by us because we're so transparent, but it's very easy to take a tweet or something written out of context and, you know, interpret it in your own way. You know, we could explain a situation 
And someone can be like, oh, you know, they're just trying to make that wrestler look bad or this and that. So, you know, we were trying to find like a, you know, a medium to be like, you know, no, we're not trying to be negative. We're just trying to explain things for real and not insult the intelligence of fans. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we would, when we would do stuff like that, we would get, we would get attacked, you know, on, on things like Twitter and stuff like that by just saying like, Hey, you know, this dude isn't here because he's going to a football game. Uh, you know what I mean? People are like, Oh, what are you, what are you burying him and what he does in his personal time for? It's just like, we're not burying him. This is just literally the, you know, the excuse that we were given as to why they aren't going to be at the show. Um, so, you know, I think the podcast, we're able to give a lot more context to some of these stories and explain them in depth and make people understand our side of the story. And, you know, that we're not trying to be assholes or, you know, be negative. We're we're just trying to be honest. And I feel that that's a, that's a quality that is so lacking in independent wrestling as a whole. Um, You know, we just, we just want to be real and we don't want to, you know, have to lie to our fans or, you know, anything like that. So I think the podcast is kind of a relief on our end and the fact that we can fully explain ourselves on so many different topics. Totally. And I think, like, I think back to the podcast you guys did talking about the, uh, the uh, uh, Grado comes to America weekend of events you were going to do and the whole issue with TNA pulling in and stuff like that. And, and it, it, it makes you think like, wow, like all the, I can't even imagine how much stress that must have been on you guys, you know, to, especially with oh, all that was built up for it. So it was, I mean, it was unreal. Like we essentially, we'd never ever tried to do a triple shot before we were only doing it because we purchased this very expensive flight from Europe, you know, from Scotland and we were trying to make the best of it. And we we're trying to, you know, do something cool with the weekend. And it, it just, it fell apart so quickly. And it's just like, how do you explain to people like, you know, okay, like how many people would even pay attention enough to TNA to know that Grado was on a show that was airing in Europe and they were going to pull him to be filmed in America that weekend. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it, it's so hard, you know, and we don't want to assume that everybody is, you know, in touch with everything. So it, it was just so, it was such a stressful time for us. And, uh, you know, it was, it was so bad with, you know, then on top of that, all the other border problems and different things we had to deal with because, you know, on paper that weekend was supposed to be so much different than how it turned out. And that's kind of, you know, why we decided to name our podcast, the card is going to change because stuff like that happens all the time to us. We have this like awesome card written down on paper and, you know, we'll have this like four months worth of an angle all booked out and ready to go. And then, you know, boom, something happens. Like, you know, Sleazy Sparks is banned from America for five years. So, you know, there goes all her plans. Uh, But, you know, we're, that's, that's the one thing that I think we've become good at over these years is we're able to kind of figure out a way to, you know, to keep things going as best as we can. Right. And and, and we've all, and Eamon, I'm sure you have too, seen enough shows where where there have been like weird cancellations and 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 horrible hell super indie down here and uh, but we had uh, uh Jay Janella to get thrown off of a roof into a flaming car you know in barbed wire <laughs> was it like, he was he was supposed to be on our show the day before you know we, yeah we, we were built that was one of our big angles that we were building up towards absolution it was going to be you know it was it was going to lead to you know this this Friday it was supposed to be Joe Janella versus Facade in a TLC match and like the third rubber match blow off uh. And then all of a, you know, all of a sudden, Joey Janela gets thrown off the roof into a flaming <laughs> pickup truck, and that that whole plan is out the window. You know right. what I mean? So uh, that's that's why we have we kind of you know initially we're reluctant about our podcast, and now we're you know once we've seen the feedback and you know saw that people are enjoying it, now we're very like excited when we have to go record these podcasts. Like I know before we started recording, I explained to you how we do it, like we're kind of on the TNA taping schedule of podcasting. We go <laughs> and we knock out like a month's worth of episodes on one Monday night. And then essentially what we do is we'll wait until we have another show. And then that following Monday, we'll go into the studio. Uh, the guys at, you know, CLE sound and then this is awesome podcast. They help produce it for us. And we go and like, we'll have that one show that just happened fresh in our mind. 
and we'll get a really good podcast discussing that. And then we'll just, we'll spit all some other topics that we think people would find interesting. And then, you know, it's, it's just kind of like a freestyle sort of thing. That's great. And then we, we record about four episodes and then same thing, you know, we, we wait a month and then we go back into the studio and record more. And that's completely an option because what what you're doing isn't timely to this just happened except for like that show that just passed. I mean, and you're covering that. Uh, that that's great. Um, and I think when people are like oh, I don't have time to start a podcast, they don't think, well, you could do it like just one day a month and and kind of kick those out of there. And there's a few even clients I have there where we we do the same exact thing because um, they're they're busy. And, you know, we we were very. You know, I, I'm I'm very like much a stickler on it needs to be under 40 minutes because I understand that there's these podcasts that go on for hours. At, you know what I mean? <laughs> and people don't, you know, people don't really have an attention span. So like, I, if we were going to do a podcast, I wanted to make sure it was short, it was sweet, and people weren't like, "Oh man, these guys are so boring." Um, so that's another thing. You know, we like to keep them under 40 minutes so they're just nice, easy listens. And, you know, it, it's kind of funny because Smart Mark Video sent me a text the other day that, you know, we sold a bunch of copies of Wrestle Rager, uh, you know, full sets, just what he assumes is based off the podcast because we haven't sold any of those shows in like a year. Um, so I guess, you know, subliminally or whatever, people are, you know, listening to this podcast and then, you know, they want to go and see the, you know, see how it all kind of played out, you know, on the actual show, which is. You know, which is something we never even expected or thought about. That's awesome. That's great. You're like kind of resurfacing all those and uh, and, and getting new yeah. fans into it. Yeah, which is crazy because you know, and I, wrestling moves at like you know the speed of light. Like something that happened two weeks ago is already old news. So moving, you know, shows that happened two years ago on video is like almost unheard of because you know people just you. Know, People, I don't know why, they just, oh, that show happened two years ago. I don't care if there's awesome stuff on it. I just don't want to see it. So, like, you know, a lot of this stuff has kind of like a three-month shelf life. And then, you know, it, it almost becomes, like, worthless. And, you know, the fact that we're doing this podcast telling these stories and people are just going back and buying those things, is, it just blows my mind. Wow. That's that's awesome. Um <laughs> from there uh and and, and 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 i'm sure there's plenty of other great stories that can come up uh, um aiw has had a history you had a great talk about the girls night out being started and how you were finding talent and if you look at the uh alumni for aiw uh you know it, it's kind of a who's who of geez what we just saw in the draft uh, uh tonight as we record this on smackdown for instance guys like seth rollins guys like daniel bryan coming through there uh, um over the years um you guys, and maybe you know this is probably one to one connected with the the interesting the card will change. You guys really kind of stretch out to get who's hot or who interests you. Or I think at one point you said we want to book this guy because we just want to hear his music uh, come down our entrance way at, at, on one of your earlier yeah. podcasts. Like 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 your motivations for booking people are fantastic. And 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 you yeah. <laughs> that was Rob Conway, by the way. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, uh, yeah, um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, like, we just feel like, you know, yeah, like, you want to book the hot indie guys. Of course, you want to book the hot indie guys, but you can't book every hot indie guy. Mm -hmm. You got to try to be different. And, you know, we feel, especially now, you know, so much more now than even before, is, everybody just wants to be PWG and that's it. Like, and to me, I don't want to be the Midwest PWG. I want to be the only AIW. So like we try to think of like the weirdest things that we could possibly do because, you know, just like we said that there was a, you know, uh, kind of a void to be filled with a, having an independent promoters podcast. Like there's a void to be filled with people that don't want to see the same shit on every single indie show. You know, so we'll go out and, you know, we'll book Dan Severn or, you know, we'll like, we just, we just booked Spider Nate Webb today oh, <laughs> like, wow. for, for, for an upcoming show. Uh, you know, so just stuff, stuff like that is, you know, like that's, that's what we do because a, like we're, we're fans and there's stuff that we were fans of that I think that, 
you know, there's a market for, you know, like I think this Friday we have a match with Dutch Mantel managing Dick Justice against Jack Sampson being managed by Colonel Robert Parker. Like that is just <laughs> weird stuff. You know what I mean? But people love seeing weird stuff like that. People want to come and meet these people and, you know, get a photo with them and see these like just weird freak show kind of like matches of like these old territory guys on a show where there's going to be someone who's going to probably try to do a double moonsault to the floor. You know what I mean? Like it's got to be wrestling has to be a variety and a weird, just kind of mashup of everything instead of there's a lot of these shows now promotions that are just like, we just want to be this one thing. Like people love variety. People don't want to see the same kind of match all night long. You know what I mean? So we just, and like you said, like, a hundred percent. We just booked Rob Conway because we wanted to hear that. Just look at me song once. Um, <laughs> that's, we'll be sitting there and like, we'll be trying to think of something. And that's the kind of dumb idea that gets blurted out. And then we, we, it, it ends up becoming a reality and we book them, you know, like, uh, my partner Chandler Biggins, his favorite wrestlers as a kid were bunkhouse buck and the stud stable from like 1994 WCW. <laughs> sure. Sure enough, you know, we've talked to a couple different people. We get Bunkhouse Buck's uh, landline number, and, you know, that, that's the rest was history. Um, just stuff like that. We we try to do so much just outside-the-box things because, especially in independent wrestling, you got to try to stand out as much as possible. So, you know, we can book all these same guys that are doing every single show, or, you know, like I said, you know, we can have a couple of those guys and then we could have Dan Severn thrown in the middle of it. You know what I mean? And people are going to be like, what in the world is this? And it gets people interested. Um, so, you know, we just, there's no rhyme or reason based on, you know, who we book versus who we don't book. It's just sometimes we just think it's so outlandish and so funny that we book it just to see how it goes over. And so, you know, thankfully, the majority of the time it goes over pretty well. <laughs> that's awesome and that sticks out and, and, and like i said uh, absolution last year uh kind of sold us uh by the fact that you had uh dudes on tv was one of the teams and you talked about in your podcast a little bit about how that came together uh with the likes of uh ray Rowe, uh zima ion uh geez who else matt cross and and uh, uh bateman uh all so, on, all on one mojo too so oh, some mojo yeah, that's right that's right uh all in one match is you know, with young bucks I, I'm, I'm forgetting people um uh, it, it, it's really cool to see that it, it sticks out you guys i think have definitely solidified your identity over the last several years uh, of course, and, and 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 remember, you guys have been at this. People need to remember, like, well, how how can our promotion be as awesome as AIW? It's like you guys have been doing this for ten, eleven, twelve years. Yeah, I mean, but you know what? Like, it, like I said earlier, you know, we've been at it forever, but you have to always be willing to evolve and change, and you mm -hmm. know, like how I thought, you know, in two thousand five is probably so much different how I think in twenty sixteen. Uh, but, you know, you, you kind of, you got to be flexible as a promoter. There's kind of, you know, I, I know that there's promoters out there that they just stick to their guns and it's just my way or no way. And, you know, you're not going to get a lot of success with that mentality. You have to kind of, you know, be open-minded and be, you know, be, be ready to change and evolve and, you know, uh, just kind of switch things up and, you know, call an audible on, you know, something that you thought was going to work, but isn't going to work. So, you know, like we've been at it for a long time, but you know, uh, honestly, there, there's probably going to be a problem Friday that we've never experienced in our life. You know, it's just, you, you never know what's going to happen being involved in, in running independent wrestling shows. You know, I tell, I tell some, like, I tell people this all the time. Like if you have a gambling addiction, like don't go to the casino, open an independent wrestling promotion because the chances of that going well, uh, it's so, so risky. Um, it's probably the best, you know, the, the best kind of gambling rush you can ever feel when it does pay <laughs> off. Awesome. And there you go for uh, all you promoters out there. 
Uh, so uh, we like to end off the show with a uh, couple of questions. First of all, other than uh, obviously you're very involved in your own product, I, I obviously you're paying attention just looking at the roster. I mean, hell, Absolution has representatives from TNA, the Cruiserweight Classic, geez, uh, just everywhere. Um, what are you watching these days? What's at least what's got your interest these days that you're paying attention to? <laughs> like honestly, you know, a, a lot of what I don't watch a lot of modern wrestling. You know, I what what we do is we watch what people are talking about. We watch what fans are talking about on message boards or on Twitter or, you know, things like that. Um, it's just, you know, as I get older and your life, your real life kind of takes on, you know, so many more responsibilities, it's hard to watch everything. But, you know, we have kind of, you know, formed this, like, secret underground focus group of guys that will, like, really send, like be like, check this guy out, watch this. Um, you know, this is the next guy, stuff like that. Um, honestly, what I'm watching right now is a lot of the monsoon classic YouTube channel, like 1993 <laughs> superstars matches, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I really like, I can't get off that dude's YouTube channel. Um, that's a lot of the majority of what I'm watching today. I watched Tracy Smothers versus Bruiser Bedlam. That is the only wrestling that I watched this week. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm watching these days. Um, but like I said, you know, we, it, it, what, what I like a lot of the times it doesn't matter. You know, we're looking at what fans are saying and, you know, who's telling us who, like, who's the next guy to book, uh, stuff like that, because, you know, I'm not buying a ticket, you know, fans are the ones that are spending their money. So we, we pay a lot of attention to what, you know, what they're saying and, you know, where they're leaning. And we just try to, you know, get in on the ground floor of a lot of these guys. Awesome. I have, by the way, just completely subscribed to the monsoon classic uh, YouTube channel. Uh, oh my God, dude. Yes. it will take, it like, it will take over your life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> every streaming service at my real job is blocked except for YouTube. So like, I'm just all over this dude's YouTube channel. He also runs the concession stand at AIW, which is, totally random but um <laughs> he, he just like he he has like he dedicates his life to just uploading this obscure like old television wrestling you know like you can get lost on his like 1997 worldwide playlist oh wow i'm looking at tony atlas versus the spoiler and the Ma maple leaf wrestling i'm afraid to show this because i don't know i never know what wwe owns anymore they'll tag us so uh <laughs> That's yeah, great. like it's weird. Like WWE, like I looked into it because I'm super weird about YouTube and like statistics and things like that. And like I looked it up, and WWE has claimed his channel, so like oh, he uploads this stuff, and they just like they, they just take all the ad money. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. But, like he loves it. He just loves having like putting these like weird things out there, and he'll tell me like, man, like they zapped my whole channel down for three days because I uploaded a Sabu match from WCW. Like he says, like he tries to explain to me the politics of uploading WWE owned material. And it's like so bizarre, but I highly recommend like anybody checks out his YouTube channel because there's so much weird stuff on there. Wow. Yeah, we've had some discussions about that on the show as well. Uh, so uh, we actually, before I get to the final question, we had a question in the chat room. Uh, Brienne? I think is asking this. Any chance we'll be hearing um, some of the AIW students on your podcast? I'm presuming they're asking about um, your podcast and not ours. <laughs> your podcast, they, I could absolutely set it up. My podcast, <laughs> um, it's not really like a guest like interview type of thing. Um, you know, we, we've been asked to interview people and stuff like that. And I just, you know, maybe we'll eventually do that. But right now it's just kind of like, us sitting down and telling, you know, just telling random stories based on, you know, some topic. So I don't know, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get into something discussing the school and how that is a whole different stressful endeavor is running a professional wrestling school. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we're going to be, uh, interviewing them any, anytime soon, but, uh, I highly suggest maybe the Indie Mayhem show interview some of them because a lot of them, are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see what we can set up there. But um, I, 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 I no, they, like seriously, like if there's a couple of them that just do a lot of drugs, they're like legit idiots. You would <laughs> not even understand what they're talking about half the time. One pitched, one legitimately pitched to me today that 
AIW brings back the brawl for all. And it was like a real serious thing about getting boxing gloves. And he really thought that this was going to take AIW to the next level is, uh, is the AW brawl for all? I, I was so, just assuming that I was just assuming that's what your upcoming blood sport event is about. It's just a big brawl for all tournament. Oh, that's what he wanted to do, and I was just like, "No, man! Like, we just called it blood sport, honestly, because UFC is running Cleveland the next day. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're, we're really not gonna uh, have people do a kumite. Like, there's probably some laws against that. But he's like, "No, man! Like, let's do this brawl for all thing, and you know, I'll." I'll box anybody, and I was just like, "Oh man, like this is this is the kind of thing that you got to deal with when you're operating a pro wrestling school." And the the idea, the level of ideas pitched are are unreal. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I, I've heard some of those from from students. Yeah, yeah. Um, question. Uh, the, oh, sorry, I, I was trying. To, I had. I had. I had. A, I had a question about your podcast, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to ask it on the show or off. But I'll go for it. Uh, maybe. Maybe I'd love to see. This is me just kind of wishful thinking here. When you guys start running out of uh, 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 stories, if that could ever ever happen after after how long you've been doing this, I, I'd love to hear you guys talking with other promoters. You know. You know. Like like like. I, I, I for me that I think that would be a really cool cool kind of you know. Thing for you guys to jive on a little bit um so yeah i mean because i think everybody kind of has their own um just horror stories oh, um yeah. that's one thing you know that that's one thing you know like uh drew Crodero from beyond he has already kind of like inquired about hopping on and you know telling his side of the story on so many different crazy things that he has to you know kind of uh deal with just out you know, running his shows in Rhode Island and the New England area. So yeah, that's like, that's definitely, that's something that's been discussed. Like, I, like I said earlier, we never thought we were going to do podcasts. So like, it's all right now, it's all like a, like a learning as we go uh, sort of thing. It's kind of, you know, how we run AIW. Like there's kind of like a loose blueprint and we just kind of roll with it and see, <laughs> see what happens. So uh, that's definitely not outside the, uh, the realm of possibilities because I think, you know, Every every independent wrestling promoter has to deal with the dumbest problems. Like you would have no no idea that like the level of just like you know real life people probably can't even like comprehend just like the dumb problems that you as a you know independent wrestling promoter has to deal with. Like you know when a wrestler you book them and then like the day before the show they say like oh hey like I forgot to tell you I don't have a car. <laughs> you know, how do I get there? Um, you know, like stuff like that. It's just like, could you imagine like, Hey, like, cool. I got a job. Um, but Hey, I don't have a way to get there. You know what I mean? Can you like help me get to my job? Uh, you know, stuff like that. And like, I understand people that require flights and things like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking people like that live like two hours away <laughs> and they're just like, Oh man, I don't have a car. Like, what am I going to do? Can somebody come pick me up? Like, just, like, stuff like that that is just, like, mind-boggling. I imagine every promoter has to deal with, like, just the, like, the dumbest of problems. Um, so, yeah, that's, it's definitely something that we could do is, you know, down the, down the road is probably, you know, hook up with a couple other promoters and, you know, hear their, you know, hear their stories and let them share. And we kind of just talk shop a little bit. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. And finally... Final question: What is the best and worst thing? Oh, I could go very many ways with this. Uh, of being a wrestling promoter, we'll say tonight. Um, I mean, the best is just like the weird stories that you know, like the life experiences that you get. I feel like you know that's that, that's one thing that you know, like I have like what I call like civilian friends, and like they'd never experience like these wild and crazy, just random stories. Um, or like, you know, you get to like work with people you idolize as a child. Like, you know, we brought in Terry Funk recently and things like that. And you get to just like hang out and drink beers with them and like, just talk and, you know, just like hear their stories. Stuff like that is probably the best part of being an independent wrestling promoter. And the worst part is just like, all the problems or like the years that you have to go through of like losing money and scraping by and like 
sacrificing your relationships and sacrificing, you know, your jobs and your personal life, like that part of, you know, being involved in independent wrestling sucks because like it takes up so much of your time. And like, there's a lot of people that don't want to wait around for, you know, for it to go good or, you know, you just gotta, it's like I said earlier, you know, you're betting all your money pretty much. You're betting your rent, you're betting your car payment. And like (laughs) when you bet that and it doesn't go well, that's, that's the worst part is like, you know, the bad, like kind of growing pain years that you have to go through. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been awesome to catch up with you. Uh, and, and everybody, go check out. The card is going to change. Uh, as with, it seems, with a lot of things with AIW, a whim becomes a movement. Uh, <laughs> as so many times over the years. Um, great stories there. Catch up on them. I think there's uh, eight episodes, I think, last I saw uh, at this point. There's seven, and seven, a new yeah. one coming out this week where I talk about... Uh, playing Terry Funk's own album when I picked him up from the hotel. By the way, I was very mad that I had access to, to his, his, uh, I believe it was born Texan is the, uh, is the album name. Uh, I could be completely wrong on that, but I had it playing as me, little Guido and I picked up Terry Funk and, uh, he was not happy. And I talk about it on next week's podcast and such great titles as Shane Douglas needs a babysitter and honky tong and, likes to watch aiw yeah ai wrestling.com uh absolution this weekend come, come to absolution this friday everybody come to absolution this friday it's gonna be uh it's it's gonna be probably one of our best shows of the, it's always the best show of the year um i don't think this year is gonna disappoint we got a lot of weird things kind of lined up we're bringing in you know we've been doing a lot with lucha libre recently uh, we're bringing in, you know, we're doing this crazy six man lucha tag, nice. which I think people are really going to want to check out, um, as well as the rest of the card. The rest of the card is stacked, but I'm mostly looking forward to this lucha libre six man tag with the uh, Zima Ion and company. That's awesome. He's been doing some crazy lucha, lucha stuff out in Chicago. I know, looking at his Facebook. Um, so go check them out, ai wrestling.com. Get that if you miss it. Catch the DVD and digital downloads on Smart Mark Video and, and the whole history. A lot of great stuff there, a lot of great faces, a lot of great names there. Um, uh, so that's it for this show. Um, uh, we're not gonna have much discussion this week. We'll get back to it because we're gonna have a lot to talk about. As myself, I'm going on vacation as soon as I post these podcasts, uh, and, and get everything wrapped up tomorrow. I'm heading to the Gathering of the Juggalos. By the way, John, thank you for prepping me for that with all your uh horror stories and that oh, with Necro man. Butcher the one year. Uh, <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking about checking it out. I'm actually off work all this week because of the Republican National Convention safety <laughs> concerns. So, uh, I was talking to Kevin Gill. I might. I might stop down there. We're doing. We're actually doing the warp tour tomorrow. AIW is doing the warp tour tomorrow, nice. and then uh, off on Thursday, and then Absolution on Friday. So I was thinking about maybe I might swing through the gathering on Thursday night and see if uh, I can run into Rick Bassman and uh, Tila Tequila again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check out his uh, Tila Tequila story uh, from that episode as well. Um, so uh, I'll have. Uh, I know there's a Strangle Mania, there's a Bloody Mania uh, uh, main show, and of course a girl uh, girl fight. Uh, show on Saturday. They have, they, they have a show on Thursday now. I guess I've, uh, I've been. Oh, do they I've now? Oh, it's uh, Thursday. Thursday after midnight. Uh, Friday after midnight, and then they're having a one p.m. on Saturday, and that's the girls' show. Um, so I, 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 it's always a good time. It's always a good time. Hey, hey like, man, I was, I was, a, I was a, I was a, a juggalo back in my early teenage years. Man, I saw plenty of twisted concerts when I was sixteen yeah. years old. It's my uh, it's my yearly uh, I'm going to make myself go on vacation thing. Uh, so I'll have plenty of stories, I'm sure, as we have the last two years uh, when I've gone there. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, actually, it doesn't end for me. Sunday, Sunday uh, uh, Micro Championship Wrestling is going up to Sharon, PA. So I'm going to swing by, check that out with some friends and family. And uh, we'll be back here um, sometime, actually. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be moving some stuff around, shuffling things around on Wrestling Mayhem Show for our Tuesday night podcast recordings. Uh, but look for the Indie Mayhem Show uh, uh, next week. We'll, we'll have an announcement on that hopefully very soon. And check out everything. Of course, uh, Eamon has Inspire Pro Wrestling going on. you got a big show coming up in august of course yes indeed august 14th uh we'll have a, a lot of great uh, talent on that show including lucha and the grand star matt cross and M, uh aiw star as well uh and uh current cruiserweight classic entrant uh lince dorado you can go check out all the information for that at inspireprowrestling.com nice you guys, you guys get rid of that brandon stroud character out there <laughs> we, we did yes yes we know uh 
Good. He doesn't. He doesn't like me very much. Good. Yeah, I, I, I've heard. <laughs> Awesome. So, yeah. Well, then, then everyone support Inspire Pro now that Brandon Stroud is no longer employed. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And of course, uh, this weekend I'm going to be missing International Wrestling Cartel's Wipeout event. Jimmy DeMarco is going to be about it. You need to check out the Jimmy DeMarco, uh, uh, sexy, talented dudes uh, video uh, training video. Oh, I, was, I was I was told about this tonight at training actually by Chandler Briggins. <laughs> he was really he was really putting it over, and he said that he heard there's quite a bit that was edited out of it from. Uh, a inside source that, that told him it got it got a lot crazier, but it was a little bit edited. Oh yeah, I was thought about product. some of the um, um, yeah some of the incidents that happened during portions of that that that, that they had to um, <laughs> um, yeah when I when I got to see the preview. Uh, so, but it's going to be a crazy show. Um, there's going to be uh, uh, Robbie E. I know is a part of it. Uh, Dylan Bosick, Jimmy DeMarco. <laughs> Uh, I know Chelsea Green just announced she can't take it. She she can't she can't make it because of border concerns. And now I know what that means thanks to the IW, AIW's podcast. Yeah, uh, I, I explain all about those crazy border concerns, yep. man. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray Rowe, Alex Daniels is going to be on that card, and uh, so much more. A lot of great stuff. Of course, we talked to a lot of friends of this show. Um, are going to be a part of that as well. Um, I think that's all the wrestling weekend because I this weekend because I know there's like three shows in Pittsburgh the weekend after that. We'll tell you about that later. We're already loaded. You got a lot of wrestling to watch. Uh, go support indie wrestling wherever you are. If it's at a ga- at a gathering in Texas, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, it don't matter. Support it in the bumfuck middle of nowhere. Who knows where? Go check it support out. Support Alabama Doink. You guys know about Alabama Doink? Support <laughs> Alabama Doink. There you go. Find Alabama doing... Swing by a golden corral, man. He'll fuck up the car. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to swear. No, no that's fine. Show, that's but... fine on this one. Uh, thank you so much. At Sorgatron on Twitter, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this and so many other shows. And join us. The main Wrestling Mayhem Show is live uh, Tuesdays, now at 10 p.m., immediately following WWE SmackDown. You can join us on the... Uh, the uh, uh, live stream and chat room for that. Thank you so much, our guest John Thorne, Eamon, and for the rest, support indie wrestling. See you guys next time. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.